Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is nine o'clock and it's time for a live lecture. Now, I know this video is coming out over Christmas. I don't know when over Christmas. Michael, who's behind the camera, will probably uh, let me know at some point. But uh, I wanted to do a, uh, I, I wanted to do something really nice for you guys at Christmas. And so what I've done is I've kind of put together a one hour live lecture. Now, if I've got time, I'm gonna do a second one of these as well. And we're gonna have a couple of these live lectures just drop over Christmas as part of the kind of the magic TV programming. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for anybody who's ever watched any video on magic TV. I really appreciate it, I hope you're having an amazing Christmas or you're going to have an amazing Christmas depending when this video goes out and a great new year but yeah I just wanted to share with you you know I've created over the years hundreds probably thousands of tricks and um, one of the things about every single trick that I've ever created uh, is it has to be commercial it has to be something that works for real people in the real world and the simple reason is I work for real people in the real world I uh, you know I'm, I'm performing every single day at the moment over Christmas and I haven't got time for pipe dreams. I haven't got time for material that doesn't kind of um, uh, work. It has to have a quick reset. It has to have uh, no angle issues. It has to be something that's practical. And that's what you're going to see uh, today uh, in this lecture. You're going to see a whole bunch of practical material. The other thing that I like to do, and you guys will know this, I like to take magic um, and, and try and kind of put my own stamp on it. If you see my visible project, if you see my cheeky project, if you, uh, which was on the Cheek to Cheek deck, or my Beyond Stebbins project, or anything like that, you'll know that I like to take decks of cards um, or tricks that everybody performs a particular way and turn it around on its head and do it a different way. And that's really important to me. And the reason is there's so much magic that goes in people's bottom drawer. And if it doesn't go in people's bottom drawer, it normally just stays there, right? It just, uh, it, it just stays on the shelf or it takes a little trip to a gig and comes back and never gets used. Or if it does get used, it gets used the same way as everyone else. And what I like to do is I like to go, okay, this is how it's meant to be used. This is what you're meant to do with it. Now let's take that and put a pin in it and let's see what else you can do with that. And, and you know, some of the material you're going to see now is, uh, is, is an example of that. And I just want to share some really commercial material. And I want to start off with this. Now... I love the purse frame. At some point in the future, I'm going to do a purse frame project. We probably have 30 or 40 routines on it. One of the reasons I love the purse frame is it's such a weird object. Um, it really is a strange object. So that whenever you do something with this, people just sit up and pay attention immediately. And I like to use it in coin magic and sponge ball magic and card magic, mentalism. There's so many different ways you can use a purse frame. I want to share with you a really simple routine I've done for a very long time. It gets a great reaction. So I'm going to perform it to Michael behind the camera. Uh, Michael, have you ever seen one of these before? Um, with a purse attached, yeah. Yeah, no, this is an invisible purse, Michael. This is an invisible purse. Now, an invisible purse is a purse... Um, well, obviously not the whole thing's invisible. If it was, you wouldn't be able to see it, but the top of the purse is invisible. Uh, the bag, sorry, the top of the purse is visible, but the bag is invisible, which means that anything inside the bag is invisible until you take it out. Now there's nothing in there at the moment, as you can see. But the weird thing is this purse is what I use when I make something disappear, it always comes back inside this invisible purse. So if I take a coin and I make a coin disappear, it would come back inside this invisible purse. Now, I'm going to prove that to you right now with a deck of cards. And uh, Michael, I'm going to have you pick a couple of cards. If you were here with somebody else, I'd probably uh, have two people pick cards, but I'm going to have you pick uh, two cards if that's okay. Okay. And it doesn't matter whether I see them. This is not a pick a card trick. This isn't the trick where you pick a card and I find it. It's kind of a little bit more interesting than that. So we're going to go for this. I'm going to go down through the deck and anytime you want to just say stop. Stop. Perfect. Let's have a look at the card you stopped at. You stopped at the, the eight of spades. That's a good one. Are you happy with the eight of spades? Yeah. Good stuff. Let's go for another one as well. Uh, same sort of thing. You've got the eight. Just say stop. Stop. Nice. So we've got this one as well. And again, it doesn't really matter what this card is. Well, let's have a look at it. We've got the King of Hearts. Are you happy with the King of Hearts? Yeah. Good stuff. So we've got the Eight of Spades. We've got the King of Hearts. Now, let's see if I can do this. You've got to keep one eye on the Eight, one eye on the King, one eye on me. Try and watch the fronts and watch the backs. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to make these, uh, these two cards are going to disappear right in front of your eyes. Okay. The King and the Eight, the two cards that you picked, are going to disappear right in front of your eyes. It happens on three. One, two, 
three. There you go. Are you impressed? They're still there. No, 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 no. Sorry, you, you, they're not. The physical cards are there, but Michael, I said I was going to make the the cards huh? vanish, and that's what I've done. Look, the eight and the king have disappeared. There's no eight, there's no king. The two cards have disappeared. Not the actual cards, but the, uh, you know, kind of the, the faces of the cards have disappeared. What? Now, the question is, where have they gone? That's what everybody says. Where did the cards go? Well, if I told you that they were inside here, you wouldn't believe me, but they really are. I'm going to prove it to you. All I have to do is just reach in and take out now from inside the purse. There's that eight of spades. Because you see, you're probably thinking, well, what about the king of hearts, right? Well, the thing is, I didn't make the cards disappear. The cards aren't going to appear in there because the cards didn't disappear. The faces of the cards disappeared, which is why... We now have a situation where inside that invisible purse, I don't have a card, but I have the faces that vanished <laughs> just like that. So this is is kind of a really interesting uh, opener and or well, an opener to a card set. And it's really fun use of some common gaffes that you're probably going to have in your bottom drawer. Common use of a purse frame, which you probably bought years ago and you've never used. Now, I typically use this after I've done a routine with the purse frame. In fact, what I'll probably try and do in this little lecture that I'm doing for you, I'll probably show you a trick with a purse frame. So if you want to do uh, like a coin trick or something first, you can do. But I like to do something with the purse frame first to establish how this works, which is something disappears it appears inside the invisible purse. That's exactly what happens, right? Um, and when I've done that, I go into this. Now, the way to do this, it's very simple, but it is so effective. You need a couple of gaffes. It's a small setup, right? But the nice thing is you're left with a regular deck and the reset is almost instantaneous. So what you're gonna need is, you're gonna need a deck of cards, obviously, a double facer. I got this from a standard double faced deck of cards. Um, I'm using King of Hearts, Eight of Spades. I think there's a, a nice um, sort of difference between the two there. Whatever card you're using, you're going to take the regular card that matches it out of the deck, and then you're going to take a blank faced, uh, sorry, a blank back deck, and you're going to have the other card from a blank back deck. So uh, in my case, I've got the King of Hearts from a blank back deck, and I have the Eight of Spades from the regular deck. Now, the other thing you're going to need is a blank-faced card. So I've got a blank-faced card, a blank-back card, and the, um, and the Eight of Spades, and you're good to go. You're going to fold this up, and you're going to put it somewhere accessible from the left hand. Now, as I'm sitting down, I just had this on my lap, but obviously I never perform sitting down unless it's on Magic TV. So normally what I would do is I would just have this in my left-hand pocket, somewhere just very, very accessible. We'll put that right there. Um, then you've got uh, the setup. So the setup is very, very minimal. All you're going to do is just take the, uh, the the blank back king, put that there. The blank faced card goes on top, and the eight of spades goes on top of that. So it's a three card setup. Put those inside the box, and you are good to go. Uh, this purse frame is either in play, having done a previous routine with it, or if it's not in play. Uh, it's uh, it's on the table or it's somewhere like that. You've bought it out. They understand what a purse frame is, what an invisible purse is. I like to give that. This is a walk around piece, so I like to give this to someone to hold. Uh, and and I, like I say, this is an interesting object. This is like a, a jumbo coin uh, for lay people. It's a really cool thing to bring out and give to them. So this is a great transition trick into cards. Um, and it's not a typical pick a card trick either, which is cool. Uh, so you bring the cards out. Now you can spread them out face up, absolutely for sure. Just make sure that you are uh, not spreading so that they see that blank card up there. But you can uh, you can spread face up. If you want to shuffle, that's also fine. Just uh, make sure that you're retaining the top stock. So keep the, uh, the three cards set up on top. When you're going to go into this, you're going to force... The, uh, the the top three cards, uh, you're gonna force the top card of the deck. Now, the way that I just did that is I just did a kick cut, a kick cut and I held the break and I did a riffle force. So I just kick cut half the cards over, uh, put these cards on top holding a break and I did the riffle force. So you just have them say stop wherever they say stop. Um, you're gonna uh, basically tip forward, let go of that break and pick up at the break at the back. That's what the riffle force is and just cut at that point. Now, some people don't like to do an open cut before the riffle force, in which case you could just hold them for an overhand shuffle, 
uh, and then just uh, take half the cards from the bottom in jog one and then just shuffle off like that, which is effectively going to do the same thing because now you've got that big in jog there. You can just lift up on that in jog and you're gonna get the break above the, the, uh, the force card. So you can do that as well if you want to. I don't, I don't, but you can. Uh, and if you don't like the riffle force, substitute it for any force that you want. Not a problem at all. Uh, for me, the riffle force is absolutely fine. So uh, I turn over the top card and I show the eight of spades and I'll give that to the person that picked it. So they're holding on to the eight of spades. If you've got a table, put it on the table. Uh, you're then going to have somebody else pick a card. Same thing, you can do another riffle force. So you're just going to have them say stop. Where they say stop, you just cut at the break. And this time you're going to do a double turnover. So you can do a double turnover. Uh, and, and you know, you can either do a strike double from the side. Absolutely, that's absolutely fine. Or you can just, uh, in the offbeat, uh, just lift up at the back and, and turn over there, whichever you prefer. Uh, I like to get a break underneath those top two cards. So once I've done the double turnover, let's say I'm doing a strike. Uh, once I've done the double turnover, I get a break underneath those two cards. And I say, right, so we've got the king of hearts and we've got this eight here. I'm going to try and make them vanish. And I just put the eight on top of the king. I pick everything up. This deck is just going to be handed to someone to hold. Or if I've got a table, I'm just going to put it down on the table. Either or makes no difference. Um, and what you're going to do is you're just going to show uh, the king and the eight. Now, what's happening here is I'm taking off this eight as a single card. These two cards are being held together as one. Uh, and it allows me to have this very clean display of them seeing fronts and back. Now, there's a couple of different, this is a classic move, there's a couple of different ways of doing this change. You can kind of make it more visible like that, or you can do it the way I did it. So what you can do, I'll give you two options. So uh, you turn the eight of spades on top of the king, you've shown them front and back, and uh, you say, look, I'm gonna make them turn invisible, uh, I'm gonna make them disappear, done. And, and then they're, they're just gonna think you suck because they still see the two cards, right? So now you say no, and you turn them over, and you say no, I, I said I would make the cards disappear, as in the cards, not the physical cards, the cards. And then all you do, because you've turned it over, you can just take that top card off now and turn it over, and you can show that the faces have completely vanished, which is such a cool moment there, it really is. Uh, now that's the way I do it. If you want to kind of do more of a visual change, uh, you can go from this position, and you can hold them here as if you're about to do an Elmsley Counts, push off a double and then just flop that double over and you're in the kind of the same position. It's completely up to you. Uh, you could even, if you wanted to, going back to this position, you could even do it a little bit like a paintbrush change. So you could drop the single, push forward, pull back on a double and then turn that card over like that. There's a bunch of different ways of doing it. But honestly, the way that I do it is I just turn the card over like that, turn the whole pack over and I just show that it's gone. And uh, I then put these cards here. Now you've got a couple of different options. I like to just put those cards on top of there uh, and step back. That feels like the end of the trick. That feels like it's done. And all I'm going to do is I'm gonna steal this. So my hands are nonchalantly going to my pockets. I say, there you go, the two cards have vanished. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm just gonna grab this in finger palm and bring it out. Now, if you don't wanna put your hands in your pockets, which it's the offbeat, you've got no problem there at all. You can clip this to underneath your jacket and just drop to your hand to your side and steal it there. If you're sitting at the table, you can steal it from your lap, do whatever you want to do. Also, if you want to steal it from the pocket, but you don't wanna just put your hands in there, you could put the deck back into the box, put the box in your pocket and steal the card at that point as you come out. Because apparently the trick's over. It's completely up to you, whichever way you wanna go with that. But what happens now is it, uh, you, you've established that this thing is designed to have coins go back into it, right? So you say, uh, so that, that anything that vanishes goes back into it. So what you do now is you say, let me prove that to you. And this is such a strong moment because all you're going to do is you're just going to open up here like this, okay? You're just going to open up here like this and uh, you, you pause a beat and you bring this out, and that's such a strong moment. Now, purse frame technique, just so you know, uh, the big mistake that I see a lot of people doing is when they bring something out of the purse frame, they flare their fingers, because this is in finger palm, and in essence, all you're doing is you're just reaching in, and you're just pulling that from finger palm, but keep the fingers in the same position, like that. 
and then focus all attention here as you put that down or give it to somebody, they're going to see the Ace of Spades, which is a magical moment. That just came out of this invisible purse that they've been holding. You now open this and you show the Eight of Spades and you say, well, I made the faces disappear, which is why the faces have appeared inside the purse. And now you've got this really cool double-faced card, which is an impossible object from a, a layperson's point of view. It's like a jumbo coin. They all want to look at that. Now, if you carry a bunch of these around with you, you can give it as a souvenir if you want to. It's like a mini unsigned anniversary waltz. Uh, but regardless, it makes a really nice giveaway. And uh, you give that to the spectator. And, uh, and you're good to go. Now to reset, if you're gonna keep this, I don't give it away, I'm cheap. Just put that back into your pocket. And if you wanna go back, if you wanna go into any routine with a regular deck, by the way, all you have, you've got these two gimmicked cards here. Um, so you just take off these two cards like this. If you wanna put that one underneath that one, you can give them a little frustration count as you put them in your pocket, put those away and you're left with a regular deck. Now, that eight of spades is meant to have vanished. So you, you might want to take that eight with it, in which case you're going to pick up on a triple and you're going to put the triple away and you can show these and put three cards away and you're left with a regular deck. Obviously, if you are going to go into any other routines with a regular deck, make sure that the regular King of Hearts isn't in there because if it shows up later on, they're going to go, hang on a minute, didn't that disappear earlier on? So you might want to take the eight of hearts out of there as well. And when you go to reset, all you have to do is take those three cards out of your pocket, flip them back over on top of the deck and you reset, ready to go again. go again. So that's a really fun routine with a purse frame. I wasn't gonna do that, but now I'm gonna show you a routine with a purse frame, um, a really cool routine that I put together years ago, uh, that if you wanna do that first as a lead into this routine, you can. So let's have a look at that one right now. Okay, so this is a really fun routine that's a great lead into the purse frame routine that I just showed you. And uh, I'm using a bigger purse frame for this. Uh, the routine that I showed you previously, you can actually use a bigger purse frame to, uh, to do that whole routine as well. But this particular routine requires a slightly bigger purse frame. You'll see why in a minute. So I'm going to perform this to uh, Michael behind the camera. Michael, do you see this, uh, this, this, uh, this big purse thing here? Yeah. It's actually an invisible purse. Now, I know that sounds ridiculous, but it is. Now, the whole thing isn't invisible, else you wouldn't be able to see it. But the, the bag is invisible which means that everything inside the bag is invisible until you take it out. Now, you can't see that, but if I open up the purse, uh, the invisible purse, do you know what's inside the invisible purse? Nothing. A, a real purse, because I can't, what, <laughs> what else would you keep inside a real purse, inside an invisible purse, than a real purse? And inside the real purse, there's coins. Now, these are 1964 Kennedy half dollars. This is definitely, if nothing else, an illusion of quality. Four coins right there, four coins, one purse, one invisible purse. Now the interesting thing is, because this purse came out the invisible purse, the invisible purse and the purse have a symbiotic relationship, which means whatever happens to this happens to this. In other words, I can actually put coins inside this purse, the real purse, make them vanish and make them appear inside the invisible purse. Now, I know that sounds crazy. You probably don't believe me, so I'm going to prove it to you. Your job is to try and keep an eye on the, uh, on the four coins. They go inside the purse. Can you do that for me? Now, I want you to watch very carefully and don't blink for a second because, you see, all I have to do is tap right there. Now, when I tap, what happens is one of those coins goes right here inside the invisible purse. If I reach in, you can see that the first one's right there. What? You missed mm -hmm. that, didn't you? Let me do that again. That's the first one that came out the, uh, the, the invisible bag right there. There's a second one that will go as well. Now, nothing happens until I tap on the uh, the real purse over there. You can see there's nothing in there, but all I have to do is tap. When I tap, that's the second one that's in there. That's uh, coin number two. It's kind of confusing me, to be perfectly honest. Let's do it again. Now, just to show you the situation, we've got two coins left inside there, right? So we have uh, two coins in the purse. I'll put them in there. We have an invisible purse. These two coins have already made the journey, right? So watch carefully. You know what's going to happen. All I have to do is tap. Now, it takes a couple of seconds. If I reach in, you can't see anything just yet, can you? No. Until I uh, um, come out, and then that's when the third coin appears. That's coin number three. As the third one leaves us with one last coin inside the purse. Here's the last one. You know what's going to happen. You know that last coin is going to go from inside that purse to join these three over here. You know what's going to happen. You know when it's going to happen. Hopefully you don't know how, but that one there is coin number four. That's all four coins in a purse and everything's examinable. So that's the, uh, that's the trick.
That's a really cool trick. So let me explain how it works. I realised halfway through that routine that one of these coins is a flipper coin. I didn't even <laughs> realise it was really kind of like, I had a coin in Classic Palm at one point and it was like flopping open. I'm like, this is just so weird. Um, you need four regular coins. Uh, do not use a flipper coin for this, but uh, you know, that's something I've learned today. You also need, um, uh, th this is a Tom and Oscar style coin purse. Um, Alakazam sell beautiful ones that they use for my apparition coin set, and those are the ones that I kind of use now. Um, it needs to be um, so that you can very easily take it out of this purse here. Um, so, because what's going to happen at one point, you're going to have that in finger palm, and you're going to reach in and take it out. So you need to make sure that it will very easily come out of whatever purse frame you're using, and then you need four regular coins. So the four regular coins go right there inside the purse, just like that. Um, and, and I like to have this in my right hand pocket, this in my left hand pocket, and I'm good to go. So when I want to go into the routine, I reach into my pockets. I say, let me show you something really weird. I've got, I've got it here somewhere. Both hand goes into the pocket. I tell them that I'm going to get something. So it's not suspicious that my hands are going into my pocket. My left hand is going to finger palm, uh, the, uh, the, the actual purse. Okay. This hand comes out as if I'm searching for something. This hand comes out with this, the invisible purse. This hand comes out first, all the tension's on this, and then this hand comes out afterwards. No attention's here, because all the attention is here. I then transfer this into this hand and display it in this hand. This is gonna make this hand look natural. Um, David Roth talked about this an awful lot when he was alive. He talked about using another object as just one substitute. In the olden days, magicians used magical powers, not as a place where all their power came from, but in order to disguise um, that the hand looked less natural if something was palmed in it. So this becomes a one substitute. You're holding this, this hand then becomes natural and you're showing that this is an invisible purse. So now you're just gonna put this into uh, the purse frame production uh, and that's there, you can see that, right, Michael? That's yeah. there, just being held by the fingers. So I can reach in and I can take that purse out. Same as before, do not flare the fingers. You literally just come in, boom, drop that there, and you're good, right? This then gets closed up, and you can open up the purse, and you can reach in and take the four coins out and have them examined. Like I said, make sure you don't use a flipper. Uh, and then you're good to go. So this is um, a move that I came up with years ago. Uh, published it about 15 years ago, and it's um, uh, kind of my adaptation of using um, uh, of, of Roth's uh, routines with a, with an Akito coin box. So what's going to happen is you're apparently, uh, actually, no, the move comes later on. Sorry, the first thing you do is you do this. So you show the four coins, you put them inside the purse, but in reality, you've palmed two of those coins out. So what you're gonna do, uh, this is a Jeff Latter move. So you show the four coins, you open up the purse, you hold the purse in the left hand, right? Opened up like this. The right hand picks up the four coins and you're gonna use a David Roth technique to turn your hand palm up and display the four coins, moving one of them into a classic palm position. So the coins are there or in the spectator's hand. You grip them like this. Now the thumb pushes that coin forward so it's on the tips of the fingers you then rotate your hand over and these fingers push that coin directly into a classic palm position. So if I uh, drop those coins on the table, one would stay in classic palm, all right? So you pick the coins up, you maneuver one coin into classic palm. Now that's David Ross technique. Jeff Latter added this technique to be able to classic palm two coins. You've still got the purse here. You're gonna use your finger as you say, look, watch these four coins. You're just gonna slide that coin back into classic palm position as well. So you've actually, if I turn my hand over now, I'm going to be able to classic palm two coins relatively easily. The whole thing put together like uh, looks like this. You show the coins, you move that one back. Now all you're going to do is you're going to turn your hand over. These coins are being held at the fingertips. They think there's all four, but two are in classic palm. And these coins just get dropped there inside the purse. That makes sense. You can give them a shake and they can hear the coins and all's good. But in reality, I've got two coins here. Now, what I had earlier on is one of these was a, was a, a flipper coin. So it was flopping down, I don't, um, which was really awkward. But in full speed, let me just do it in full speed one more time. You're here. You show the coins. One, two, three, four. They go inside the purse and you close it up. It looks very fair. So now you put the purse over there. 
and you're going to rest your hands together for a second and then take the purse. Now, as you rested your hands together, one of those coins from Classic Palm got moved into left hand finger palm. And this is just a very simple changeover. It's a bit like uh, the Michael Amar white clean. So you've just put the coins in there. You're at rest now. The, uh, this is an offbeat. So you bring your hands together as you say. So I'm going to try and make the coins jump from over here over to here. Now, as I do this, hopefully you can see this, as my hands rest together, one of those two coins gets dropped into finger palm. And then my left hand rotates to hide that finger palm coin as I pick up the purse. So now I've got one coin in classic palm over here, one coin in finger palm over here. So in full speed, it's uh, I'm resting and I say, look, I'm gonna try and make the coins go over here. So now I tap over here, I open this up and I'm just gonna produce that first coin. I'm just gonna reach in, take it out and put it on the table. This coin remains hidden in classic palm. So it's just here like this, that's the first one. So now I need to get this coin over here as well, or I need to get another coin into left hand finger palm so I'm gonna use a shuttle pass. So it's gonna look like this. I'm gonna say the first coin went across, let's do it with the next one. And that shuttle pass has got me another coin over there. Now what's happening here is this is in classic palm. The right hand rests either by the side or on the table, dropping that coin to fingertip rest. The left hand picks up the coin and displays it to the audience. The left hand's gonna turn palm down like this as the right hand turns palm up, pushing its coin to the fingertips like that. And all that's happening is this stays in finger palm and this gets pushed. So you're switching this coin for this one, but the hands look natural because they see one coin over here, then they see one coin over here, but you've effectively shown your hands empty and you've maneuvered that coin into left hand finger palm. Two points on this. Number one, make sure that you put some movement on that coin as you come away. It's that movement that makes it look deceptive. Two, the thing with coin magic is you have to justify everything. If you pick this coin up, put it into this hand, then put it back down again. What's the reason for doing that? You need to justify that move. Now, my justification is to use this coin to gesture here. So you go, well, that's one coin that's come out the purse into the invisible purse. It's that gesture, you know, I'm using this coin to just tap here and then I'm putting it down. That justifies the move. But now I've got this one here. So now I can produce, I could just reach in and produce the second one, but I do an old move that's very, very deceptive where I say, look, nothing's happened yet. And what I do is I put my hand in and you could, it looks that the, the purse is empty because this hand is covering that finger palmed coin. Now don't hold that position forever, but if you just say, hey, nothing's happened yet, but if I just wait a second and then reach in, I can get the second coin. So it's very, very deceptive. So that whole thing put together looks like this. So we have uh, we have one, two coins. Uh, there they are. One, two coins, three coins, four coins. They go right there inside the purse. Uh, the idea is that I'm going to try and make them one at a time go from over here over to here. It's when I tap that the first one goes like that. That's coin number one. Now you probably missed that coin go over there. So let's see if we can do it again. Now nothing happens until I tap and nothing's there yet. But if I tap and I wait a couple of seconds, that's coin number two. That's the second one. So now we've made two coins, and this is incredible to a lay person. They have no idea what's going on here, right? So that's the second coin. Now you're gonna open up the purse and show two. So this is the move I mentioned earlier on. Um, this is a great move. It looks like this. It looks like I just take two coins and put them inside the purse. How does that look, Michael? Did that look good? Yeah. In reality, one's gone behind the purse, and it's based on a uh, move by um, uh, David Roth that he uses with the Keto Box. So you might want to come a bit closer, Michael. I'm going to rotate my hand here so you can see. You pick up these two coins and notice they're at the tips of the fingers. In essence, you're going to pretend to put them in here like this. But in reality, one of them is going to go behind. Now, all you're going to do is you're going to use your thumb to step that coin back like that. Now, you don't blatantly do it there. But as my hands go into here, as my fingers go in, that coin gets stepped back. Can you see that, Michael? Yeah. So like this. And then what happens is the fingers go in. This, the top part of the purse pushes against this coin and that automatically levers that coin behind the purse. And then all I do is I just leave that coin in there and I close and my left thumb takes over the coin held behind. Did that come across? Yeah. So in full speed from the front, you, you have the two coins here 
you just put them back inside and it looks very, very deceptive. You're now in this position. So now you're going to do a hang ping chen with a purse, because you need to get this coin into left hand finger palm. Now you could drop it, but we're going to do it in a slightly more elegant way. You're going to hold the purse here with the right hand and you, uh, hopefully Michael can pick this up. You're going to hold the purse here with the right hand. The left hand picks up the two coins that's already gone and displays them. Notice you, the first one you pick up in an open finger palm position. The second one you pick up like that is kind of more there. It's not in a finger palm position. So you pick up one, you pick up two like this. And you're going to say two here, two here. Now, all that's going to happen, you're going to, you're going to, your right hand is just going to drop its coin like that. So your right hand is just going to drop its coin as the left hand dumps one of the two coins onto the table. The fingers curl in, finger palming that one, and only one coin drops. So you just do that. But at the same time, you're going to drop with your, uh, this hand. You time it correctly. It looks like you're throwing two coins onto the table. Now, let me show you what that looks like in full speed. So in full speed, it looks like this. So we're here. So two coins have just come out. You say, that leaves me with two coins. I'll pop them back inside. This time, you know exactly what's going to happen. Remember, two coins have gone, two coins left to go. And I just show both sides of that. They are convinced there's two coins in there now. But you're ahead. You've got another coin over here. So now you're going to produce the third coin. Now, again, you could just produce it like that. What you don't want to do is you don't want to use that again. You don't want to overuse that. Um, but the, another nice way of producing a coin from a purse frame is by using a move that I first saw Shu Tawagawa do, which looks like this. Let me uh, show you the production. It looks like this. You say, now nothing's there yet. It doesn't happen until I pull it out. How did that look, Michael? Really good. Yeah. So what's happening here, if you come here, you'll see. We know that the coin is in finger palm here, right? So what's going to happen is your fingers are going to go in and your hand's going to rotate. Now, these curled fingers are hiding the fact that that coin's in finger palm. They just see my fingers come in through here. Now, as I come up this way, bring the camera over the top and you'll see. As I come in this way, notice as I rotate my hand, my fingers are automatically gripping that coin. So I just come straight out with it. Did that make sense? So we're basically using a Ramsey subtlety. In full speed, it looks like this. We're here. You turn. They can't see anything. And then when you turn back, a coin comes out. Did that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, so that's the third one right there. That's coin number three. And now you're going to show the final coin. So you open up the purse. You show the last coin. This is the final one. And you're going to put it back into the purse. Now, we've just done a variation of that move, so it's gone behind. All we're doing here is, and again, I'll show you from this angle, you pick up this last coin. Your fingers are going to go in. Notice your thumb is on the end of the coin or the edge of the coin nearest, here, uh, nearest the base of your fingers. And that's going to lever that coin up like that. So as my fingers go in, I push with my thumb and that just levers that coin behind the purse. So the final one looks like it's in the purse. I now do another kind of purse ping chen here. So I say, remember, three coins have gone, one last coin to go. That goes over there. I then take this up and I say tap. The final one looks like this. Boom, that's the last one. And, uh, and then they can open up the purse and they can see that there's nothing inside there. And that's, that's kind of the end of the routine. And then to reset, you just put four coins inside the purse. You put the purse frame away in your pocket, you put the purse away in your pocket and you reset. Nice thing about this from a transitional point of view is it's a great way to produce the coins because at the beginning you're producing the purse and you're then doing something cool with the coins. So you have options. You can go into another coin routine. Apparently I could go into a routine with a flipper, who knew? So you can go into another coin routine for sure, absolutely, because you've got these coins in play at that point, so that's fine. Um, you could also put the purse away and then go into the card routine that I taught you earlier because you've established what a purse frame is. You've established that things disappear and appear inside a purse. So now it makes logical sense that you're going to have a card picked and that's going to appear inside there and then you're left with a regular deck of cards to go into whatever you want to go into. Um, so there you go. That's uh, a really cool uh, routine, coin routine with the purse frame. We're going to move on with something else. Okay, I want to teach you one of my favorite routines now, and this is called Face Off. I first published it probably about 15, 16 years ago on a DVD called Blank. And uh, I did a video of this recently to Jack. I performed it to Jack. Uh, he's on uh, holiday. Where's he gone? What's he doing? Nothing. 
Nothing. He was just sitting around. Sitting at home. Sitting at home. Lazy sod. Um, well, uh, before he decided to just sit at home and do nothing on annual leave, uh, he um, uh, we filmed a performance of Face Off with him uh, for a future video or um, a video that we're doing on signed cards. Uh, so have a look at this and, uh, and I'll talk you through how it all works. So I have a pack of playing cards and as well as the cards, I have three very special cards. Now magicians aren't meant to tell you cards are special, but I can't really lie about this, it's obvious. No there's no faces, there's no backs. They are just what cards are meant to look like before they've been printed. Now it's very difficult to get cards like this. You've got to know somebody who works at the playing card company and they sneak them out on the graveyard show, true story. Now, as well as that, we're also going to need one of these, which is a pen. I'm sure you've seen one of those before. And finally, you're going to pick a card. Now, there's 52 cards. But, um, it, look, you've already signed a few of them. Oh, God, not a good uh, 50, in multiple <laughs> different ink. Now we're going for black. Um, so you're going, to, you're going to sign one of these cards. So as I go through the deck, just any time you want to, say stop. Stop. There, are you sure? Yep. Now, it's not the sort of trick where you pick a card and I find it. It doesn't even matter if I see it because it's not about finding the card. So we'll have a look at it together. The Six of Hearts. Nice. Now, can you take this pen and just write your name right there on the Six of Hearts? Can do that? Or you could just throw the cap on the floor, Jack. That's okay. You know, it's not like pens are expensive or anything. Fine. Uh, <laughs> it's like... Look, somebody made a comment on one of the videos the other day saying Jack always looks scared of Craig. Yeah. <laughs> Who said that? A YouTube <laughs> subscriber, apparently. You do need to get the cap because uh, yeah, exactly. else it will dry out. But so we have um, we have Jack's card, the Six of Hearts. You've got a few things that you need to do, Jack. What's that? Uh, I'm going to take that six and I'm going to leave it sticking out the pack about halfway about there. Okay, but you need to watch those three blank cards. You also need to keep an eye on that on that card. I'm not going to push it and I'm going to leave it sticking out just there. Okay? Right. Now you've signed the face of that card. I need you to sign one of the backs of these cards. The black cards. Yes, exactly. <laughs> not the face, the back. That's very important. Uh, so, which, which one do you want to sign? Um, this one, the middle one or the bottom one? The bottom one. Are you sure? Yeah. This one right there. Okay, take the pen and can you sign it for me? Front front this time. <laughs> but not on the face. Sign it on the back. Sign it on that side. Okay. Very good. Perfect. I need those two for now. Um, so, in fact, hold your hand out for me. And we'll put this card here. And if you can put your other hand on top, that'd be great. So there's a trick in magic called a transposition. And the idea of a transposition is that two things will change places. So with a transposition, the idea would be the, uh, for example, the blank card would change places with the card that you picked over there, the six of hearts. That would be a transposition. Okay. I'm going to try and do the world's first, the world's first partial transposition. You see, a playing card is made up of three parts. You have the, um, the, the, the top, you yeah. have the face, and you have the middle. I'm going to try just make the face of this card, the Six of Hearts, change places with the face of the uh, the blank card here. Just the face. Watch. What? I do all my own choreography. Yes, it's very detailed. Done. You see, this Six of Hearts that's been here the whole time that I told you to keep an eye on it, now, it's got a blank face. <gasps> and the reason it's got a blank face isn't because the card turned blank. It's because I made the face of this card that you picked and signed change places with the Six of Hearts. Which means if I'm telling the truth, and this is a partial transposition, this blank card that you signed here on the back, the face of it should now have your signed card. The fuck? Here you go. Partial transposition. I was on it the whole time. So for face off, you need a. Uh, it's a shuffle deck of cards in use, which is really cool. So let me explain exactly what's going to happen. You're going to need a couple of gaffs, but you're ringing these in at any point. So you're going to need three double blank cards, three cards that are blank on both sides. You need one blank faced card and one blank back card. Now you're going to use a blank back card every single time. So uh, if you like performing this routine a lot, you might want to carry a few extra of these in your close-up case because this becomes kind of like a souvenir. Now the setup is 
you're just going to have those three blank cards on top of these two cards. So it's blank faced card, face down, blank back card, back up. These three cards go there like that. Um, and they, they are in your pocket. Normally, I have an elastic band wrapped around those. So it keeps the packet together, or you could just keep them in a packet trick wallet. To be honest, they'll just sit in your pocket, and that's absolutely fine. You're also going to need a pen, and you're going to need a regular deck of cards in play that matches the back design of the card that is used uh, in your little setup packet. So let's just say you've done your favorite routine. You've done a 97-phase ambitious card routine, because that's how you roll, right? And you want to go into this trick. So you have the card shuffled by the spectator. You go into your pocket and you reach in and you take out this packet. Um, make sure it doesn't spread. There's only meant to be three cards here. That's why the elastic band's good. Because you've got an elastic band, you can put this packet on top of the deck, take the elastic band off, and then push off these three cards, have them examined, and you've left the little setup on top of there like that. But if you haven't got an elastic band, just reach in, make sure that this packet uh, stays together, and then all you're going to do is just say, uh, these cards are blank, would you like to have a look at them? The deck then just gets put down or uh, put to one side, and uh, you show these cards that are blank on both sides, okay? Uh, you then hand somebody a Sharpie, uh, you give them the Sharpie marker, and you say, we're going to get back to those in a minute, and what you're going to do is, and I'll tell you what to, uh, to do if you don't want a palm a card, but you're going to get rid of one of these blank cards, now, there's three ways of doing this. Now, the first way, which is the way I do it, is just by side stealing that bottom card. So I just side steal the bottom card. I put that packet down there. And then as I go into my top pocket for a pen or as I go into my pocket for a pen, I'm just going to leave that card as I take the pen out. Right. That's the first way of doing it. The second way of doing it is to just palm that top card off, reach in and take out the pen and, uh, and leave that card there. Uh, which leaves you with two. The third way of doing it, if you don't want a palm, is to have the pen in your uh, in your left hand pocket, get a break underneath the top card, and as you go into the pocket to get the pen, you ditch one of those cards in your pocket as you bring the pen out and you put the pen down. Uh, you can you can give a little false count here at this point so that they still think there's three cards. Now the other way of doing it, if you don't want to do any of that, is just by using two cards to begin with and not three. So one card wouldn't be used. If we go back to here, your setup would be like this. So when you bring this packet out, you say, I've got three cards here. Now you lift off and you say, I've got three cards that are blank on both sides. And you do like a, what we call an Edward Victor I count. So you go one, two, three. All you do, it's like an Elmsley count. So you're just pushing off a single, pulling that card back as you pull off a second one and a third one. So you can say, look, I've got three cards here. They're actually... Uh, blank on both sides. Now the disadvantage with that method is you can't have these cards examined because they'll see that there's just two cards. It's completely up to you. Honestly, the way I do it is I just have this in my jacket, in my inside jacket pocket. I have the three cards examined. I take them back, I do a side steal. As I say, we'll get back to those later on. I put them over there. I go, oh, by the way, you're gonna need a pen as well. Hold on to that. And I've ditched that card as I've gone and got the pen. Totally up to you. What you're going to do now is riffle force the top uh, card of the pack, right? So again, just like we talked about earlier on, kick cards, hold a break, have them say stop. You rock forward and you pick up at the break like that, complete the cut. So now this is where they think the card is that they've stopped on. And you're going to do a double turnover and you're going to show apparently the four of hearts, the card that they've picked. And you're going to have them sign the card on the face. So at this point now... Uh, you just have them sign the card on the face. So we'll uh, we'll say this is uh, Jack, even though he's not here. We'll put Jack's name there. So you've just signed, you've had the spectator sign the four. What I love about this trick is this is kind of a weird amalgamate. It's like a transposition, but it's a partial transposition. But it also has kind of an anniversary waltz feel to it as well. It's really cool. So you have them sign the Jack, uh, the Jack. You have them sign the four, in this case, with Jack. Um, now what you're going to do this is a move that I've never seen anyone else use, and I use it in a few different routines. And if you get nothing else out of this mini lecture, learn this move. It's brilliant. It's by uh, Matthew J. Dowden. If you haven't heard of him, uh, he bought out one of the best DVDs on close-up magic ever made called Party Animal through Alakazam many, many years ago. And what is uh, the move? Well, it's basically uh, a version of the Erdnage change, but as a steal instead. 
What it's going to do is it's going to make it look like this card is outjogged from the deck, whilst in reality we're going to steal this particular card, but they're going to um, still see the back of this one. So it's going to make it look like this has got a back on it, which is just great. So you're going to turn the double over, and what you're going to do is you're going to start the earn maze change. So your fingers are going to go in the middle of the card and push forward like that, like the earn maze change. So you're getting access to this part of the card here. So you're pushing forward. Your whole hand comes forward at this point, and then you're going to come back, and the mound of Venus is going to steal this card underneath, just like the earn maze change. You're probably thinking right now, but hang on a minute, Craig. This is an urban age change. Well, this is where things change. So you push forward, you pull back. This is now here in this position. When it clears, the second it clears the cards, you're going to rotate the pack. And you can see here that the pack is keeping that card in my palm because the, the edge of the pack is pushing that card into the palm as I rotate. When I get into this position, my lit ring finger pushes that into palm. And then immediately in the same action, with that card in palm there, they think this is the card, because why would it not be? They've just seen you outdrug it. You cut half of the cards as if you were doing some sort of Hindu shuffle, and you put those on top. And then immediately, because this has got a blank back, immediately you can say, remember to keep an eye on these three blank cards. And you're going to dump this on top of here. And because there's only two... When you dump this on top of here, they're going to see three and everything looks exactly the same. So let me just go through that again because it's a really important move to understand. So you can, can you see there, Michael? You push forward like this. The hand comes forward and steals that card back. Can you see that there? Yeah. Then you rotate. The ring finger pushes it directly here into palm. And then you're going to grab the top half of the deck, put it here like that and immediately pull back. Now, let me show you what that looks like in full speed. So in performance speed, you say, um, you say, so we've got these three cards here. We're going to get back to them in a little bit. Keep an eye on those for me. Michael, you're going to pick a card. Do me a favor. Just say stop. Stop. Perfect. Um, we'll have a look at the card that you've stopped at. We've got the, uh, the four of hearts. Are you happy with that one? Yeah. Great. You're going to sign the card. Now, uh, the, uh, your job, Michael, is to keep an eye on that card. I'm going to leave it sticking out the pack, but leave it about halfway down. But remember to watch these as well. Watch these and watch that card sticking out the pack halfway down. It doesn't look like you've done anything, but now this card has got a blank face, and this card over here has got their signed card on it. You're so far ahead, it's almost unfair, you know? Now you can spread out the cards again and show they're all blank. If you want to show the other side, you can do an eye count again. You know, and it works the same with three cards. The eye count, you just pull off one, you switch this packet for this card on the counter of two and you do that. I don't bother with the eye count because why run if you're not being chased? They've just examined these cards. They can see there's three blank cards. Now I tell them they're gonna sign one of these and I give them a choice, one, two, or three. And, I, uh, and, and they really get a free choice. Now if they get one, if they want one, I'm golden because this is the one I need them to sign. So if they, if they want one, I'm good. I go this one here on the top and I do a little double turnover to show that it's blank on both sides. I say that one there, brilliant, sign it. And, and they're signing the other side of this. Now, if they want, uh, if they want two, uh, what I do is I reverse count and I upjog the second card. So remember, the card I want them to sign is on top. So if they say two, I go one, two, three. So you want this one right here and they say yes. I put it underneath the packet. Now, because I've reverse counted, that's the signed card there. I put it underneath the packet. I turn everything over and I say, can you sign that card for me? But on the other side, and I just do a push off double turnover uh, as if I'm turning the card over and I put it there. But now I've switched that signed card in. So again, if they say two, I go one, two, three. That's this one right here. Can you sign this card for me? Would that be OK? But don't sign that side. Sign the back. And now that's the signed card. And if they want three, I do basically the same thing. I go, I reverse count and I go one, two, three. So that's this one, right? So now I've got that signed card at the bottom. I take this, I put it underneath, I flip everything over and I say sign that one, but on the other side and I do another block turnover. Okay, so it doesn't matter which card that they want, they're going to sign that card. 
So um, let's say you say two, so you go, so let's say they say two, so you go brilliant, one, two, three. That's that one right there. Can you sign that one for me? But do me a favor, don't sign it on the face, sign it on the back and you do that. Um, and then I give these two to hold on to by somebody else. The nice thing is these are examinable. So now they sign this one, or if you're doing this to somebody else, you can have somebody else sign it. Uh, let's say this one's signed by Michael himself. I've spelled Michael wrong, but whatever, who cares? Um, I've spelled it right. Have I? Yeah. It doesn't look right. Okay. Um, so now you have them hold this in between their hands. And the cool thing is, you're done. You're done. Because now they've got this card here with the signature on both sides. You've got this card over here. All you do is you talk about this partial transposition. You do this and you do this and you say, well, I'm not going to make the cards change places. Just the face of the cards change places. You turn this card over and the face is now blank, which is insane. It's examinable. They turn this card over and the face is now on this card, which is examinable. You can give this out as a souvenir. And all you have to do to reset is you just put these cards here back into your pocket, making sure that you put it so that this card goes on top. Now that's gonna put everything back. All you need to do is get another blank backed card, drop that there behind everything, and you'll reset ready to go again, and you've got a really cool souvenir that you've given people. For years, this has been one of my favorite routines to perform because it's like anniversary waltz. It's a transposition, it's kind of quirky. You can even lead into this by doing a normal transposition and then saying, well, let me show you a partial transpo. Uh, it's called where, Face Off. We're going to have a look at one more. I think we've got time for one more. Okay, so uh, I want to share with you now probably one of my favorite tricks. I actually, when I uh, lectured at Blackpool a couple of years ago, I lectured on this. And everybody rushed out to the dealer hall to get themselves a quiver. Uh, if you haven't seen it, a couple of years ago on Magic TV, I put a video up on uh, the hows and whys of the quiver. And I shared several performances of routines. I think this is one of the greatest utility items to close-up magicians that like, has ever been created. And uh, I'm about to share with you a card to wallet that I do pretty much every single gig. Uh, and I love this because it's a challenge card. to It's not really a card to wallet because this is kind of more of a uh, kind of little change purse thing. But this gets insane reactions. So I'm going to perform it to, uh, to Michael if that's OK. So, Michael, I've got a couple of things. I've got a pen. I've got a little um, uh, change purse here. We'll get back to that later on. And I've also got a deck of cards. Now, uh, we'll give the cards a shuffle, and then you're going to pick one of these. Michael, it's a completely free choice, but I'm going to have you sign that card. So maybe one with a bit of white space. What you got? Um, I see the Ace of Spades. That's great. You wreck any trick that I'm planning on doing in the future with Aces. Thanks, Michael. <laughs> Don't worry about it. You, you, just, uh, you, just, you just destroy that Ace of Spades. Why not? Thanks, man. Um, we're going to put Michael on there. Uh, Michael... M-I-C-H-A-E-L. Why am I so rubbish today? And uh, we'll put Magic TV on there as well. Magic TV. Perfect. Right. So, that signed. There's a rule in magic that you never tell the audience what you're going to do ahead of time. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do, Michael. I'm going to have that card vanish and appear inside this purse. Now, inside here at the moment, I've only got one thing. Can you see inside there? Yeah. Got a little... Coin. If you coin. were here, you would reach in yourself. This is actually a silver dollar, uh, a Morgan silver dollar. But you can see there's nothing else in there. You could poke your finger around in there if you wanted to. Yeah, There really thing. is uh, nothing else in there. So I'm going to try and, uh, well, first of all, I'm going to fold your card up like this. And the reason is a full card wouldn't fit in there, so I am going to have to fold it up. But the idea, Michael, is I'm going to try right in front of your eyes to make your card vanish and appear inside there. That's exactly what's going to happen. Would that be good? Yeah. That's exactly what's going to happen. Now watch and don't blink. I have to put the coin back in there. Can you see the uh, the coin going in? Yeah. Uh, nothing else? Nothing else. You could put your hand on here. If this, you, if we were doing this in the real world, I'd do this walk around. I'd have them hold their hand out. They would, they would, they would literally put that in between the hands themselves. So the question is, how do I get this? into this between your hands. Well, that's where the coin comes in. You see, the coin's in there at the moment, but that's my lucky coin. So if I want to get this into there, I just have to get the lucky coin out, which looks something like that. How did that look, Michael? Uh -huh. Did that look... Yeah, that's the, um, that's the coin that was in there. It's now, uh, it's now out, which leaves the question, what's in there? Well, Michael, I told you what I was going to do. You didn't believe me. Come over and have a look, because you'll see now 
inside there there's a card. I'm just going to take it out, not just any card, Michael, but this one is actually your Ace of Spades with your name on it. Ta-da! So, I love this. Um, I, I love this so much. I'm going to show you. Uh, I do this all the time. A lot of the time I'll do this as a follow-up to a regular card to wallet. I'll do a card to wallet. And if you've ever done card to wallet before, they'll be like, how did you get that in there? I said, look, I'll tell you what, I'll do it again and the challenge conditions, and I'll take their card, and I'll do this as a follow-up. This is just great to drop in any time, and also because you're using a coin, it's a great transition into coin routines, or from coin routines into card routines. So you're going to need a quiver. Now, um, you probably know what a quiver is, but if you don't, it's like a modern-day change bag for close-up magicians. There's two compartments in here, and you can go back and forth between the two compartments. There's a a tab here that allows you to go from one compartment to the other. Now, when this first came out, every magician in the world bought one, and they're all using it on social media to print paper into uh, into money and stuff like that. But then everybody stopped using it. And I don't see many people using a quiver, but I'm telling you, this is one of the most commercial tricks you can do. Now, you're going to need two coins. I'll tell you that right now. You're also going to need... It's not a gimmick. It's a folded-up card. Now, this folded-up card... I actually use a, a double backer, but you can use whatever you want to. It makes no difference. Um, you're going to put the double backer folded up inside the uh, the um, inside the, the purse, and make sure that you know which way it's orientated. I keep it vertical like that, so just remember that you know which way it's orientated. Uh, which means that I can switch to the other side, and that card's not there. And I put one of the coins inside there as well. So now, one side I've got a coin, one side I've got a card. That goes into my pocket. The only other thing that I need is a regular coin that matches the coin inside there, and that goes in the same pocket, in my right-hand pocket. And then I've got a deck of cards in play. I've done whatever I want to do. So when I want to go into this, here's what happens. There's a few things that happen. Um, the first thing is I'm going to uh, reach in and take this out. I'm leaving the coin in my pocket, but I'm taking this out. And I point out that inside there, I've got a coin. I open it up. I let them reach in and take out the coin. Um, and, and they can examine it. And I say, put your finger in there. There's nothing else in there, right? Um, don't open it this side. You're going to give the game away. That's very important. Open it coin side. Uh, but as I say, they can fiddle around in there. They're not going to feel anything else, which is really cool. Uh, and then I, um, I, what I'll do is I'll just have someone hold their hand out. And I'll put this into their hand like that with the coin on top of it. Now I have somebody else pick a card, and they can have any card, there's no force, they can sign it. And I say to them, I'm going to try and get that card into that change purse. Let me show you exactly what's going to happen. And then I fold it up like this, and I say, I'm going to fold it because obviously in this size, it wouldn't fit in there. Um, and I, let the, I open it again so they can see it really is their card. So now I take the, uh, the quiver, and I'm going to open it. Uh, to this side, to the uh, to the side that doesn't have anything in it. And I'm going to put the card in here, and I say the card is going to end up in here like this. And I let them see, I let them see me putting that card right there into an empty purse. And then I close it for a second, and I say, do you understand? And they say yes, and you go, brilliant. Now I open it up to the other side, and I apparently take that card out. From their point of view, nothing's happened. But I've just switched right in front of them their sign card for the double backer. So the trick is, in essence, already done. Because the card is already inside there. But they can see it's not in there, right? They think it's there. In all the years of performing this, I've never had anyone go, open the card again. It never happens. Because this is such a fair structure in terms of what we're doing here so now i have them put the coin into the purse themselves so they pick the coin up they put it in the purse and i have them hold their hands out and i get them to hold everything in between their hands so they do so now i i, I relax this is kind of an offbeat if there's any focus on anything it's on the purse and i relax and as i relax i just go, put my hand in my pocket and i finger palm the coin and I'm kind of saying, right, okay, so I'm going to have to get that card into that purse while it's held in between your hands. How am I going to do that? And my hands come out, and this is now finger palm here. And I say, well, the only way that I can think of doing that 
is by getting the coin out. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing this. I'm going to show you the way I do it and then a, 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 an easier way, a couple of easier ways. The way I do it is with a spell band. Doesn't that look great, Michael? It does. Yeah. And it's a thumb palm spell band. All that's going to happen is you're holding the card in spell bound position. Notice my forefinger is underneath to stop it from opening. This is in finger palm. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to rub it and my thumb is going to go underneath the card taking it into thumb palm. As soon as it's in thumb palm, I grip the edge of the coin. These fingers extend and I rub back. And this just ends up leaving in thumb palm as that appears right there. Now from the front, that is a very, very, very deceptive change. It just looks amazing. You get a reaction to that. Now what I do is when I've made that appear, I body turn to the right. And as I body turn to the right to show the person on the right that's holding the purse, because the choreography here is the person on the right is holding the purse. When I get to this position, I move more to the left. So I'm over here, so they're this way. So when I do the change, I can then turn back this way to show this person. This hand naturally swings down and I just put it in my back pocket. Okay, so I say, look at that. Isn't that weird? Wasn't that the coin that was in the purse? And, and now it's in my back pocket and I'm done. And now they can see the coin and I can hand it to somebody. Uh, that's the way I do it every single time. Now, if you don't want to do it that way, a couple of different variations that are a little bit easier. The first way is to do a bobo switch. So you can literally just say, look, if I squeeze the, the card, it turns into the coin. And all that's happening here is it's an old bobo switch. You've still got the coin in finger palm. You grab the card in thumb palm, you drop it into your hand, leaving the card in thumb palm, but it's actually over there. Uh, that, that Leaving the card in thumb palm, they think it's over here. This is the coin. So in full speed, it's, uh, right, look, let me show you. I'm gonna try and get that card into that purse like this. And I open up my hand and I show the coins there. And again, I swing to the side and I dump that. Now, if you're worried about dumping this into your pocket and you're worried about people catching it, which they won't because the choreography and the structure just makes total sense. You could, if you want to, do the old bit of when they've signed the card, you can put that back away in your pocket and you can go, well, uh, let's see if we can do this. I'm gonna need a pen. I haven't got a magic wand, we'll use a pen. You reach into your pocket for your pen, you ditch the, t uh, the, the card and you tap and you show it's turned into a coin and then you can put the pen away. The other way of doing it, the final way of doing it is displaying the card here, remember this is in finger palm, and just doing a vanish into this hand. Now if you do the vanish, you don't want to let them see the coin, so you're going to do it like that. So the fingers close and you're not seeing what's in the hand. So it's just a simple finger palm vanish, but you're, when you open up your hand, you've got the coin there. And if you want to ditch it into your pocket to get the pen, you can do that. So you can say, look, I have to try and get this card into this purse, I'm gonna need my magic wand. Well, I haven't got a magic wand, I'm gonna use a pen. If I tap, that's when it turns into the coin. So you can do any way that you want to. There's lots of different options here. But the way that I always do it is I just show the, uh, show the card. Oops, I don't do it like that because that was rubbish. I show the card and I just rub, I turn it into the coin and then I switch as I come over to here. So I ditch as I come over to there. Either way, the coin's here. Now all focus can go here and I just open it to the correct side and I let them see that now there's a card in there, which is insane because a second ago they saw a coin and they reach in and they take it out themselves. They can see there's nothing in there. No heat is on this at all. It's all on the card. This just goes away in my pocket. Nobody wants to look at that. And then you open up this and when you do, they see that the card is now their signed card and you can give them this as a souvenir. Now the reset is cool because you've already got the coin inside there. So to reset as you walk away from the table, this coin is just gonna go back into your pockets and you're just gonna reach into your right hand pocket, take out the, uh, uh, the double back or whatever you're using, put it into the other compartment, orientated the correct way, and you are ready to go again. Uh, you'll reset and you're left with a regular deck to go into whatever you want to go into. So there you go, guys. That is your Christmas Magic TV lecture. Uh, if I've got time, I am going to do another one. I'm not guaranteeing it because I'm a bit busy at the moment, but we are going to try and do another one for over the Christmas period. I'm sure that uh, Michael will be putting text at the bottom of the screen saying, yes, Craig has had time, <laughs> or no, Craig hasn't had time to let you know if there's another one of these coming up. Uh, but regardless, uh, I just want to say two things. One, thank you so much 
uh, for uh, checking out Magic TV. If you've ever checked out a video on here, I really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart, I really do. And uh, if you like my magic and you enjoyed this lecture, do two things for me. One, let me know in the comments down below. And two, if you want to see more of my magic, please go ahead and try The Netrix out. It's my online streaming platform for magicians. It's called www.thenetrix.com. There's something like 500 routines on there now. We upload another five every two weeks. Uh, people like Justin Miller, people like Kyle Purnell, uh, people like uh, uh, myself, uh, Christian Grace, Lloyd Barnes. The list goes on and on and on. And every week we have a VMC uh, where we can, it's kind of like a virtual magic club. That's what it stands for, virtual magic club, uh, where we talk about various different uh, routines, different tricks. I do lectures. We talk about business. Uh, it's, a, it's a great platform. If you want to check out the Netrix, please do so. Uh, but regardless, I hope you enjoyed this Christmas lecture. Thank you very much uh, for subscribing and watching Magic TV. And I'll see you again soon. My name's Craig. Merry Christmas. Remember, ho, ho, ho. Mm.